Today, I'll talk about fine-tuning large language models for improving search relevance and ranking. I am Dr. Rashid Abai, Senior Data Scientist at Algolia. I am an expert in computer vision, natural language processing, and data-driven um, estimation of dynamical systems due to my aerospace engineering background. Let's walk through the agenda today. Uh, we will start with training machine learning models. So we will know the essential components needed to train any type of machine learning models. And then we will jump to natural language processing with transformers. Uh, we will understand what natural language processing means. Um, and then we will uh, learn more about a specific uh, neural network architecture called transformers. And then just of the talk, fine tuning large language models for search relevancy and ranking. I would like to inform you well ahead. Uh, this is a technical session. Um, please just hang on. Um, I'll try to give some examples to make everything as clear, but there may be some um, specific language that we use in data science. Um, if you have any questions at the end, please feel free to ask. When we train a machine learning model, we have five essential components that we need to have ready for us to be able to learn anything else. The first one is input and target data. Since we are, what we talk here is supervised learning, we need to have data set as an input and also label. Um, in our case, if this is image, as you can see, it's a cat image. And when we pass this through the neural network architecture at the end, what we expect to have is cat or whatever the numeric representation of the cat. And then the neural network arch architecture. So this is a fully connected neural network, but there are various um, other um, architectures, which we will talk like transformers, convolutional neural network. But essentially uh, the idea is same for all of them, where we have artificial neurons and each of them has some linear structure with a nonlinear component. So it's just like weight, and bias. Uh, these are like parameters that we can optimize um, based on our expectations. And then the objective function, what we call loss function. Think about this case, we pass a cat image, but at the end, uh, the machine learning model says like it's dog. So this is an error. Numerically, we know how we are off. This is just a function. And then um, we just compute how much error that we have based on per uh, neural network parameter, which is basically the slope, slope of the mistake with respect to each components of the neural networks. And this is called gradients. And if, if you just uh, remember from your calculus days, it's just chain rule, uh, a specific way of handling chain rule. Um, and then once you know how much correction that you need to do, per parameter based on the loss and follow the gradient descent algorithm, uh, which is a numerical optimization technique, you minimize this error, which is the loss function error. At the end, uh, we guide the learning in terms of updating all the internal parameters of neural network in the way that when p we pass a cat image, we get uh, the decision cat at the end. So this is whole um, learning process, and it is um, the same across all machine learning models with some minor differences. Um, if, for example, we talk about like decision trees, um, it's not just the first order, but uh, the second order uh, gradients are needed as well. But this is, um, this is something beyond this discussion. Natural language with transformers. What is natural language processing? Natural language processing is the technology that enables computer to process, understand, uh, interpret human language. Instead of just representing ones and zeros, now um, they represent those ones and zeros in the form of a language that we understand, coherent, meaningful. And the architecture that we will talk about uh, is uh, today transformers, which is the most successful, the state of art for natural language processing uh, task. And on the left, if you look at the image query and the database, transformers are the neural networks that, that can mimic 
the same process that you see on the left, which is just retrieval process. You have a query and then you find the similarity with the keys and this decides the weights. And if you multiply weight and find the similarity with like value, it creates the attention. So basically what we are trying to learn when we do the optimization, like I described very early, um, these parameters, keys, queries, and values in the neural network architecture are updated in the way that the machine learning model knows where to put the attention, very similar to human does this, right? So when we look at a, a sentence, immediately we know where to put our attention. And without just reading maybe the whole text by looking at the right places, we understand overall under, uh, overall meaning or, or what, whatever the message underlies in that sentence. This is exactly the same idea. And why transformers are successful, so successful is because um, we can just process large batches of information at once because of this attention mechanism. Compared to earlier uh, techniques called recurrent neural networks, uh, we just pass all the information to the next one and at the end, the information dies out. Um, and with, with the attention mechanism, we don't have that problem. And also transformers due to their simplistic structure can be fine tuned and trained very efficiently. And let's move to fine tuning large language models for a specific purpose, improving search relevance and ranking. What we will see here is um, we will just uh, discuss a little bit like variation of um, a transformer, uh, which we call like BERT, bidirectional encoding representation from transformers. So we will use this structure again, but we will have uh, some different technique in learning, uh, which we call like similarity based learning um, by applying uh, CME's um, uh, learning scheme. So what does what does this do in the whole uh, training process is you put sentence one, sentence two is a, like a pair and pass through this neural network, which shares the weights together. So it's like CME's network. And at the end, it learns the similarity and dissimilarity in the input sentences. And at the end, you get uh, a value between zero to one. And so you what you get is if they are similar, uh, they need to be clustered together. If they are this similar, they need to push them away from each other. This is very relevant for semantic search because exactly this is how we do uh, in semantic search, mapping uh, each sentence to a vector, and then we have a cluster. If any um, embedding is close to that cluster, we need to see as a you know result uh, return to us. If not, we, we shouldn't see it because it's not relevant. How do we do this? Uh, we leverage constructive loss um, and the constructive loss indeed, um, you know, maps everything else in the learning process. If they are uh, in that embedding space is closer, they just pushes them to closer. And if they are dissimilar uh, away from each other, as you can see in the image on the left before training, uh, two blue dots is a bit like far away. Uh, but the orange and the gray one is uh, closer, even closer than the blue ones. Once we do the training, each iteration, uh, we have a loss function because of this. And then we update the internal structure of the um, uh, sentence embedding. And at the end, when, once we are done with the training, we see the blue ones are closer, but gray and orange one is far away from each other. And since we discussed about like uh, the architecture, we need to uh, go to the data preparation part, which is very essential to build a very competitive model. The data set used for this experimentation is Amazon ESCI dataset, um, which is uh, one of the best uh, e-commerce data sets that exists right now, publicly available. Um, and when we look at the um, relevance, we have exact substitute, complement, and irrelevant. Uh, basically, um, these are like human uh, labels, uh, but it can be something different. For example, at Algolia, we leverage beta scores, which is basically um, a, a number that tells us um, how how the interactions between the customer, um, you know, how, how the interactions are positive in the way that um, they need to be at the top. So these are the target values you, you can remember from the early um, 
discussions about the machine learning training. And in this example, we just scaled them logarithmically. Machine doesn't understand exact substitutes. We need to give some numbers. So uh, we give logarithmic scale uh, for exact relevance one, and the all others are like logarithmically decreasing. Once we do the training with just 10 epochs, um, we see performance improvement in ranked bias overlap of 31% and NDCG 4%. And in terms of relevancy, which means like the, uh, the distance between like query title pairs overall 32% improvement and the description 37% improvement. So we can see immediately by looking at these overall statistics, not only we improve the um, ranking, but also relevance. But we didn't stop there. We also optimized this uh, fine-tuned model uh, using um, Onyx uh, library. And at the end, we just improve memory footprint by 10% and also made the model 1.9 times faster. And the loss in accuracy was just 2% compared to 32-bit version. And overall performance is very similar. We didn't degrade. Not not um, not that much uh, when we optimize hardware, optimize this model. Why this is really essential? Because not only uh, we are after building the best model, but also we are building the best model um, that will be cost efficient and extremely responsive at deployment. That was the overall results. And when we look at the distribution of uh, the results per query, what we see as an x-axis is the uh, percent improvement per query um, and the frequency of it. So immediately we realize that uh, we, are, we are always improving some queries, but also degrading the performance of some queries. But it's OK, because not only the number of improvement, but also the magnitude of improvement per query is so large um, overall stats shows us that um, the performance increased. There'll be some sacrifices, but as long as uh, the improvement overweigh um, the parts that you degrade um, is, is acceptable, um, you, the training achieves the goal. And overall improvement is distributed well over all the queries. Since we see this overall statistics in per query performance um, distribution, now we are moving to individual examples. This is how we do as data scientists at Algolia. Um, once we look at the overall statistics, uh, we go to interesting cases uh, to understand how we can even further improve uh, whether or not um, the model is behaving as expected uh, per individual cases. And in this case, um, we see uh, our fine-tuned model at the top uh, successfully just pushes all the exact results at the top. But this is not the case with baseline model if you look down. Um, so by just fine-tuning our model with this uh, e-commerce data set, we just taught the model to put exact results at the top. At the same time, if you look a bit down after the exact results, you'll see uh, the other substitute uh, irrelevant and complement uh, can be confused. So this decision boundary is not that well for both of the models. Um, there are a couple of explanations for this. Uh, first, we just scaled logarithmically, and that means the model is biased towards um, you know the maximum number, like one. So it gets the uh, benefit by putting them at the top in terms of loss. Um, so this is a behavior that we expected, and this is uh, this is why we put this bias into the uh, model. And the other one is the sensitivity. Uh, this is a very interesting example because, um, as you can see, uh, all the, the text difference uh, for wireless keyboard and mouse, what you see with the um, yellow and red arrows, uh, is not that much. Um, after comma, things changing. Um, and baseline model is very sensitive to that. Um, so it doesn't have uh, the knowledge that they need to be clustered together and they need to be at the bottom. Uh, but fine-tuned model through learning process understood wireless keyboard small um, is associated with wireless keyboard more than MOS mostly. Um, and the other details are not that important um, and shouldn't uh, change the ranking that much. 
Uh, that's why uh, it it just knows they need to be clustered together and at the bottom at the same time. And then another interesting example is um, why we do this and explains why we do this uh, at, at, at its basics, because um, unless you train the neural network with associated uh, data set uh, that has the distribution of what you expect, um, so it never knows the ESOP is a brand name and 10 by 20 is the size of canopy tent. This is exactly what, why we do this. And once we train the uh, model with the e-commerce data set, it associates the branding and the size with the canopy tent. Uh, and it knows now these are related. These are these needs to be clustered. These pair needs to be clustered together. That's why fine tune model put uh, almost perfectly and even perfectly exact ones at the top because of that reason. Uh, but baseline model didn't know anything else. How how they need to be how they need to be um, put together. So um, it is evident that uh, fine tuning models with e-commerce data set um, has, uh, has improved our models performance drastically. And we come to the end of my presentation. Um, and in terms of like highlights, we have trained large language models, synthesis emitting model uh, for semantic search uh, uh, purpose, and we increase it, its performance um for ranking and relevance and at the same time we also we also know the supervised learning with constructive loss uh, is a sample efficient, efficient way to fine-tune these models although we use other techniques like reinforcement learning um reinforcement learning is not that sample efficient that's why uh, using constructive loss with supervised learning and uh, scaling the vector distances in the embedding space gives uh, very promising results. Data pre uh, preparation uh, and quality and quantity is also extremely essential and important uh, for training a competitive uh, model for semantic search. Uh, because like I have shown to you, uh, based on your expectations, you need to even uh, define how the labels needs to be distributed and let alone you know, hundreds of hyperparameters that you need to search. Um, it's not a straightforward um, uh, thing to do, but um, through experience and with the data set that we have, which is the highest quality and quantity, uh, we tackle this problem at Algolia quite uh, without the his hassle. Thank you very much uh, for surviving my presentation, which was a bit like technical. Um, if you are interested in how we just uh, improve the models, deploy, uh, efficiently at Algolia, please reach out to me. And in general, if you want to discuss about any computer vision or natural language processing um, and uh, architectures, you can reach out to me uh, on LinkedIn. Um, my uh, ID is Rasita Bai. Please, uh, if you want to come talk to me, uh, just reach out to me. Thank you very much.